Hey everyone, Johnny from Ignite here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Today, I'm going to be taking you through how to do a sentence of analysis start to finish when you're looking at a quote from a text. Today, the example will be from 1984. It doesn't matter if you haven't studied that text. It's more about the principles and the process of what I'm doing. I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step of how to actually go from reading a quote to writing a meaningful sentence of analysis, making sure we tick off all the elements of what a marker would wanna see or what you would want in a high quality essay. But before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel because we appreciate your support and the more subscribers we get, the more content we can keep delivering you. All right, so I'm gonna be looking at this quote from 1984. This is by George Orwell, okay? It's a great text, great novel. If you haven't read it, I recommend you read it. More relevant than ever, perhaps, right now in the time that we're living in. So let's have a look at this quote. I won't give you the full context of the whole novel. I just wanna show you the principles of taking a quote, finding a technique, and saying something meaningful about it, packaging that up into a sophisticated sentence. So the quote is, for perhaps two seconds, he was back in the half forgotten world of his childhood. This is talking about Winston, the protagonist. Then a door banged, seeming to cut off the smell as abruptly as though it had been a sound. Okay, great, so that's the quote I'm dealing with. It doesn't mean I'm gonna use that full quote, that's just the section of the text that I'm interested in. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to apply the elements that we need in every sentence of analysis. So the, here are the four elements. We always have a technique, so I need to find a language feature or a technique that has been used by Orwell in those sentences or one of those sentences or parts of one of those sentences. I need a technique to label the quote with. I also need the quote itself, but I don't wanna use the full quote. I only wanna use as much of the quote as is necessary to support the point I'm going to say and to make sure that it clearly demonstrates the technique that I've just labeled. Then we're going to include a verb, so something like reveals, highlights, suggests, portrays, illustrates, any of those words that help us transition from our evidence into our explanation. Then we're doing the effect. What is the effect? What is the meaning? What is the significance of the piece of evidence that we are analyzing? You can see below, I've actually provided a basic sentence structure that I would recommend using every time you're doing the first step of writing your sentence of analysis. Of course, by the time you put this into an essay, you don't want every sentence having the exact same structure. That will get very repetitive and it may detract, it will detract in fact, from the sophistication of the response. However, as a first step, I really would recommend that you do this every single time. So you have all of your evidence packaged into these sentences that look almost exactly the same because from there you'll see steps two and three, we start playing around with that base sentence and then you can make it into something unique. Okay, so the technique in the quote conveys the effect. We'll start with that. That just allows us to insert our elements into some kind of sentence that we can then work with after. That's where a lot of students go wrong. They try and tick all the boxes on the first go and that actually makes writing the sentence, even starting the sentence, really difficult. It's best you just put everything into a basic sentence structure like what I'm showing you here and then you work on it after that. You create these further iterations, these further versions where you can actually tweak the original sentence and develop it further. But it's far easier to do that if you've already got the base sentence there. So in terms of this quote, what's our technique? Well, I'm gonna focus on the idea here that it says for perhaps two seconds. It's as though it's not certain. The technique there, because it's uncertain language for perhaps two seconds, not exactly, not definitely, perhaps, well, that's called low modality. So there's a use of low modal language here that I'm going to talk about because I think that's important. Why is it perhaps two seconds? Why don't we know for sure? because nothing is known. It plays into this idea of memory being very fragmented, of reality being very distorted and uncertain because this whole novel is about totalitarian control and manipulating the psyche. Okay, so that's one aspect there that I'm interested in. I also like this idea of the half forgotten world of his childhood. Why is it half forgotten? The half forgotten world of his childhood. So he kind of remembers his childhood, but he kind of doesn't. So he's kind of hanging on to the past but also being pulled back into this present 
because Big Brother doesn't want you to remember the past. Big Brother, the totalitarian leader here, doesn't want you to remember the way things were, doesn't want you to remember your personal truth, your personal narrative. They want to construct a new narrative that helps strengthen ideological allegiance. They want people to obey exactly what they say and they want people to believe exactly what they want them to believe. So that's what Big Brother's doing here. We can see here the struggle to preserve your memory because we are being so brainwashed with all of this new information and all of the truth of the past has been eliminated in this world. So that's why it's the half forgotten world. People are forgetting who they used to be, their family, how things used to be because we don't want any old world to compare the new world to because the new world is not pretty. So if you have an old world that looks a lot better, that might encourage you to resist, to rebel against the current state. Whereas if you can't remember the old world, then why would you actually feel the need to rebel? Maybe it's always been this way. So you see here, this quote is about the manipulation of reality, the manipulation of the past, and it's showing that through this uncertain memory of the protagonist's past. Now, what I've just explained there is really the effect part of the sentence. So we're going to say something to do with that. I want to say it in a very concise way, more concise than how I just explained it, but hopefully that helps with your understanding. Now I'm going to apply the basic elements of the sentence as described. So you can see the low modality in then the full quote. Again, I'm not going to keep that full quote because it's far too long, but I'm doing it for now. It's a starting point. Embrace the starting point. And then you can see I said emphasizes, and then here's my effect. The extent to which Winston is torn between a fragmented past and a disjointed present. Okay, now you could do something more with that. You might want to elaborate on that a little bit to connect it to the particular question that you're answering in an essay. But more or less, that's a pretty decent effect to have as a generic response. Notice here the most important part of this effect, and this is what you need to grasp in this first step. This is what I would be putting all my attention on in this first step. It's all about the effect. That's where all of the marks are coming from. You just need to tick off the other elements for now. The main thing you want to focus on is having a clear connection in the effect to the words of the quote. And notice how I've done that here with fragmented past. By saying fragmented past, that clearly relates to a half forgotten world of his childhood. So half forgotten world, because you only half remember it, it's clearly fragmented. It is not a coherent holistic memory. You can only remember little parts of it. You can only remember fragments of it. So it's a fragmented past. Why past? Because it says childhood. So do you see how the words of my effect have a clear connection that even a marker could see as they read through it to the words of the quote? I'm not repeating the quote. I'm not translating. I'm actually saying something meaningful by saying Winston's torn between that and the disjointed present. But the marker will clearly see that's the most key thing to understand. There needs to be something in the effect part of the sentence that clearly connects with the words of the quote and or the nature of the technique. Now, our second step is to start changing this around. Instead of saying the low modality, I'm actually going to say Winston's because I want to contextualize the quote and make it flow. I want to let the marker know who or what I'm talking about as early as possible. So Winston's low modal experience of synesthesia after smelling real coffee. Now, that was the part I didn't actually show you in the extract, but that was what was going on if you were to read more around that extract. So he's smelling real coffee and it takes him back to the past. Now, why have I added that in? It wasn't in the quote. Again, because I want to give context to the quote. I want to make sense of it to the marker or to the reader, but I don't need to provide the full context just enough so that we can situate this quote within at least its micro context. What was happening roughly at the time that those words appeared in the novel? Okay, so you can see I've done it quite concisely. Winston's low modal experience of synesthesia after smelling real coffee. Notice the next bit, comma, where, I added in where instead of saying in for perhaps because it doesn't flow. We want the quote to flow as though it was part of a normal sentence without the quotation. So you can see by adding the word where, it actually flows nicely onwards as though it's part of the sentence without even being a quote. Listen to this. Winston's low modal experience of synesthesia after smelling real coffee 
where for perhaps two seconds, he was back in the half forgotten world of his childhood, emphasizes the extent. So you can see there, we actually have that nice smooth transition in by simply adding the word where. Now, sometimes you might wanna use the word of, you might wanna use the word as, maybe in will actually work with the quote. But notice how I used where there to ensure that it flows like a normal sentence. So play around with the words that you use just before going into the quote and try and make it so it flows smoothly. The other thing to note is clearly I haven't used all of the original quote. You can see the difference here between step one and two. I've actually omitted the second sentence. Even though I like the second sentence because it has the synesthesia, which is this mixture of senses, so sound and smell being mixed together, that's what synesthesia means, a mixing of the senses. Even though it had that, I decided to prioritize the first part of the sentence, and because the first part of the sentence has my low modality in it, perhaps I chose to keep that one. But an important thing for me to even point out here is the four was actually a capital to begin with. So technically, I shouldn't just make it a non-capital. I shouldn't make it lowercase. I should actually show that I've changed it. So because it originally was a capital F, it was at the beginning of the sentence and I've changed it to a lowercase f, note here that I'm gonna put square brackets around the F to show, hey, this F didn't used to look exactly like this. So you can do that when you manipulate the original quote to flow into your sentence because it doesn't make sense to have a capital letter in the middle of the sentence. That's why I don't wanna keep the capital F. Although if you did that, it wouldn't be the end of the world because it is a quote, but I just like to have it fully in sync with a normal sentence. So I make that capital F a lowercase and I use a square bracket to show that that is the part of the quote that I have altered. You can also see because I said Winston's low modal experience, I no longer needed to say emphasizes the extent to which Winston, because I've already said Winston. So I've actually extrapolated from that and said emphasizes the extent to which the individual psyche is torn between which is, is much better because now I'm generalizing. I'm using Winston to make a more general comment about what the novel is about. So it's no longer about one particular character. This is about the individual more broadly. So that is a far more sophisticated way to talk about it. And then I have been able to preserve the rest. Now let's look at the last step here, step three. We wanna now integrate some aspect of a macro feature or form and or some reference to context. For this particular one, I'm going to integrate an aspect of the macro form. So the macro feature of the nostalgic undertone of the novel. Because so much of the novel has this kind of nostalgic undertone to it, that becomes a macro feature because it's something that characterizes the text as a whole. So look for those things in the text you're studying. And then what you can do is you can have this nice clause at the start of the sentence to bring it in and you can say, facilitated by, I love that start, facilitated by, or reinforced by, or characterized by, then say the, what the macro feature is, the nostalgic undertone of the novel. And then we go into what we were going to say in the previous step. So this allows us to address a macro feature while then addressing a micro feature, low modal. So we've got a specific technique and a macro technique blended together nicely by following the steps that I just showed you to do this analysis. All right, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Hopefully you can do that. Remember, you could do context as well instead of the macro feature in that initial sentence. You could just say reflective of a certain contextual element and then go into your analysis. But the key thing to take away from the video is to go in the steps I showed you. It should make the process far easier. If you enjoyed, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it around, and I will see you in the next one.